The fear of God brings favor. The remarkable thing about God is that when you fear God, you fear nothing else, whereas if you do not fear God, you fear everything else. Oswald Chambers Grace and powerful words from an early 20th century Scottish preacher and holiness movement evangelist and teacher, best known for the devotional My Utmost for His Highest. He discovered that the fear of God overcomes other human fears. Do you fear God? Time and time again in the Old Testament, we see the phrase, Fear God, or Fear the Lord. And the reason being is that if you learn to fear God, it will transform other areas of your life. Let us see what the inspired Word of God teaches. Deuteronomy 6 verses 24 to 25 And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive, as it is at this day. And it shall be our righteousness, if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God, as he hath commanded us. Observing this great saying of the Bible brings rewards. The first thing mentioned is that it is for our good always, according to Psalms 31 verses 19 to 20. Oh, how great is your goodness, which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have prepared for those who trust in you in the presence of the sons of men. You shall hide them in the secret place of your presence from the plots of man. You shall keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. Here we have two different passages that mention the fear of the Lord and the result of the fear of the Lord is for our good and the goodness of God. If you feel as if God's favor has left you, if you feel as if God's face is not shining upon you, I have a question for you. Do you fear Him? Fearing the Lord means to be in reverence or of His holiness, to give Him complete reverence and to honor Him as the God of great glory, majesty, purity, and power. Words cannot describe Him. Words cannot adequately describe God. The Bible tells us that no man has seen God and lived. Do you understand that? That if you saw God right now, your body would be consumed. Your spirit would quite literally leave your body. Your mind cannot understand such a God, a God who is pure in his nature, a God who is described as a consuming fire. I encourage you to be in awe of his holiness. I encourage you to be in awe of his righteousness. I encourage you to be in awe of his purity. Fear the Lord and you will receive favor. Such is the favor that comes with this understanding of the fear of the Lord, that reverence of God will take you into the secret place of his presence. Here is another key that puts you and I in his presence, the fear of the Lord. Find the key, brother and sister, and use it for your benefit. The other reason mentioned is that the fear of the Lord saves you from the plots of man. It is one of the ways you earn protection from God and have victory over your enemies. Let us remind ourselves once again of our basic scripture in this sermon. Deuteronomy 6 verses 24 to 25 And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is at this day. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he 
hath commanded us. How does this come about? The fear of the Lord is generated or established in our lives when we observe the statutes God has given us. That is living as we should, in righteousness and in relationship with Him. The psalmist is able to help us to appreciate and understand the blessedness of the reverential fear of the Lord. Psalms 112 Praise the Lord! Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. His descendants will be mighty on earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Unto the upright there arises light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A good man deals graciously and lends. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he will never be shaken. The righteous will be in everlasting remembrance. He will not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He will not be afraid. Until he sees his desire upon his enemies, he has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn will be exalted with honor. The wicked will see it and be grieved. He will gnash his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. Psalms 128 verses 1 to 4 Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. When you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy and it shall be well with you. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the very heart of your house, your children like olive plants all around your table. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. Pray and ask God to have the spirit of the fear of the Lord upon your life. When we claim to be born again, our behaviors should show that the fear of the Lord is in us. A life that fears the Lord is a life centered around obedience. A life that obeys God's word and takes his word seriously. If we truly fear the Lord, we will obey his commands, live according to his word, and say no to sin, and say yes to righteousness and purity. We do not sleep around because Scripture teaches us that it is not the right thing to do, regardless of our justification premises. That is what the fear of the Lord is. We do not lie, even when it is convenient for us to lie, because Scripture teaches us that it is not the right thing to do, regardless of our justification premises. That is what the fear of the Lord is. We do not sow discourse among other believers, because Scripture teaches us that it is not the right thing to do, regardless of our justification premises. That is what the fear of the Lord is. John describes the fear of the Lord this way. Contained in 1 John is the real McCoy, if I may express it in the contemporary idioms. 1 John 1 verses 5 to 10. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins 
and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Brothers and sisters, when we align with the word in this way, it is a sure sign of obedience and reverential fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord has numerous benefits for the obedient. Proverbs 10 verse 27 The fear of the Lord prolongs days, but the years of the wicked will be shortened. It is a possibility that the Lord will prolong longevity in your life. It is equally true that the absence of the fear of the Lord shortens one's life. The choice is yours now that the scriptures continue to reveal to us the pros and cons of the fear of the Lord upon mankind. This is alluded to in Ecclesiastes 8 verses 12 to 13. Though a sinner does evil a hundred times, and his days are prolonged, yet I surely know that it will be well with those who fear God, who fear before Him. But it will not be well with the wicked, nor will he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he does not fear before God. To make it plain and simple, the fear of the Lord entails reading the Word and prayer. Prayer enhances fellowship with God the Father as the Word builds you up.